Hello everyone. Am I live? Am I clearly visible, audible? Give me a minute to confirm. Visibility, audibility is great. I will start the session ahead. Give me a minute. Yes, I guess it's good. So very, very good morning to all of you. I guess I'm clearly visible and audible to you people. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Those who are watching me live. Yes, Priyanshi, am I visible, audible? Is visibility, audibility is good? Kindly give me a thumbs up in the chat box so I can start the session ahead. Okay, okay. So I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here. A very, very good morning, a refreshing morning to all of you. So today we are going to start a ultra important topic in pharmacology that is autonomic nervous system. Now in autonomic nervous system, you have to understand four chapters, cholinergic, anticholinergic, adrenergic and antiadrenergic. But to understand these four chapters, you should have an overview about the receptors, about the neurotransmitters, about preganglionic, postganglionic, neurons, everything. Most of the students I have found, they don't even understand what is autonomic nervous system. So in today's session, before starting the four chapters, we will have an overview of autonomic nervous system. So without wasting any further time, let me start what is autonomic nervous system, right? So we know humans have nervous system. Can you see humans have nervous system? Nervous system have two parts, central nervous system known as CNS and peripheral nervous system known as PNS. Now let's start with CNS. CNS, central nervous system. What is central nervous system? We all know in central nervous system, we have two things, the brain and the spinal cord. Can you see in this diagram, this is brain and this is spinal cord. This brain and spinal cord constitutes central nervous system. We all know that. But what is peripheral nervous system? From the central nervous system, the nerves arises, the nerves coming out. Those nerves constitute the peripheral nervous system, P and S. You can see from the brain, the nerves which are coming out of the brain are known as cranial nerves. We all know that. And from the spinal cord, the nerves coming out are known as spinal nerves. So how many cranial and how many spinal nerves normal human being have? So normal human being have 12 pairs of cranial and 31 pairs of spinal. I'm talking about pairs. See the diagram. So in this diagram, can you see the 12 pairs of cranial nerve? Yes, you can see. In this diagram, can you see the 31 pairs of spinal nerve? Yes, you can see. You all know the names of all 12. Nerve number one, two, you may be knowing. In anatomy, we have learned it well. And in the spinal, we divide them into five categories. First eight are uh, cervical. Then the next 12 are thoracic. Thoracic also known as dorsal, right? The next five are lumbar. The next five are sacral. And the last one is coccygeal. If you add them all, it will be 31. So you should know the distribution. Now these all constitute peripheral nervous system. The nerves are the peripheral nervous system which are coming out of the central nervous system. Central nervous system is brain and spinal cord. Now these nerves are of two types. We all know that the sensory and the motor. Sensory nerves are also known as afferent and motor nerves are also known as efferent. You know what are sensory and peripheral nerves. I guess everyone knows. So sensory nerves are the nerves which take the signal. Now these are the organs. Let me draw a few organs on both sides, right? The nerve which carries the signal from the organ towards the CNS is known as sensory, sensory or afferent. And the nerve which carries the signal from the CNS towards the organ is known as motor. We all know that, right? So I am interested in motor nerve. To explain you autonomic nervous system, I am interested in efferent nerve. I am interested only in efferent nerve or motor nerve. You got my point? So just a second. Give me a minute. I can't see your chat. Okay. Yes, now I can see. Okay. So efferent nerves are important to understand autonomic nervous system. Now these efferent nerves are of two types. Efferent nerves carry signal from the CNS to the organ. We got this point. So you can see these all nerves. They carry signal from the central nervous system towards the organ. They can be cranial. They can be, uh, they can be spinal. So they are carrying, see the arrow, they are carrying the signal from the central nervous system towards the organ. They are of two types. What are the two types? They are somatic and they are autonomic, which is our chapter today, autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system is all about motor nerves. It is not about the sensory, it is about the motor nerves, one of the type of the motor nerves. So you will say, ma'am, what is the difference between somatic and autonomic? Both these are motor nerves. See, in this diagram, you can see the somatic and the motor. Students don't even have the basic concept. Now here, I can see this is central nervous system. I can see this is brain and this is spinal cord, which constitute the central nervous system. I guess you can see it clearly, right? This is the central nervous system. 
now see this now this now and this now all these now look at the arrows i have drawn three arrows they all are carrying signal from the central nervous system towards the organ towards the organ not depending on the type of the organ they are of various types if the organ is voluntary voluntary organ like skeletal muscles like my deltoid bicep tricep i can move them voluntarily if i wish i am i'm contracting my voluntary skeletal muscles my bicep deltoid tricep all the muscles right so such motor now which is carrying signal from the central nervous system towards the voluntary organ voluntary organ it is known as somatic this system is known as somatic system right now look if the organ is hard it is involuntary i can't stop my heart or uh, exaggerate my heart it is not in my hands the beating of the heart the intestinal peristalsis the lung contractions so the visceral these these muscles are known as visceral muscles that is smooth muscles these are involuntary we cannot control them so such now which carry signal from central nervous system towards the involuntary muscles the smooth muscles they are autonomic so this one is also autonomic this one is also autonomic nervous system ans so ans is basically the motor nerves which carry the signal from the central nervous system towards the organ which is involuntary or smooth muscle the one with skeletal muscle is somatic the one with smooth muscle is autonomic give me a thumbs up uh, osama uh, give me a thumbs up priyanshi others give me a thumbs up have you got it please give me a thumbs up if you got it so that is the concept others also so what is autonomic nervous system you got it now you will say ma'am why you have drawn two two types of autonomic nervous system so autonomic nervous system is further of two types the sympathetic and parasympathetic you got my point now let me tell you the difference again now see again the three nerves see the arrows these three are motor nerves all these three are motor nerves but see what is the nerve can you define nerve for me actually nerve is the axon of a neuron the axon of neuron constitute the nerve so neuron where is the cell body can you see this is the cell body cell body is always in the central nervous system and the axon is coming out which is going towards the organ and this axon constitute the nerve in somatic nervous system i am having only one neuron only one neuron the neuron is starting from the central nervous system and it is ending in the skeletal muscle the voluntary muscle so in somatic nervous system we always have only one neuron which constitutes the nerve right but in autonomic nervous system ans in ans we always have two neurons so can you see this is the first neuron i am drawing with green color this one this is the first neuron i am drawing with green color and this is the second neuron i am drawing with purple color so we are always having two neurons whenever we have two neurons we should have a junction in the center the junction is known as synapse the junction is known as synapse the junction of the two neurons is known as uh synapse or you can say it is known as ganglion the junction is known as synapse or ganglion right now what are the name of the two neurons if there are two neurons we should name them one is preganglionic this one because it is before ganglion and one is postganglionic here also one is preganglionic one is postganglionic so we are having two type of neuron somatic and autonomic both are motor nerves the efferent nerves right but in somatic they both carry signal from central nervous system towards the organ because they are motor but depending what is the organ if the organ is voluntary skeletal muscle it is somatic if the organ is involuntary smooth muscle it is autonomic that is the first difference the organ is different and the number of neurons also different in somatic system we are having only one neuron so no need to name it only one neuron but in autonomic we are having two neuron one is preganglionic one is postganglionic you got my point now you will say okay ma'am we got it one is preganglion one is postganglion so in autonomic nervous system basically we are always having two neurons in contrast to somatic nervous system in which we are having only one neuron somatic nervous system we will study some other day i will teach you the somatic nervous system neurotransmitter blockers everything but some today my topic is autonomic nervous system so you will say but again why there are two type of autonomic nervous system now see depending on the length of the pre and post ganglionic neurons we have divided them into two portions again see okay give me a minute to uh uh okay just a second to show you same in the diagram now see uh here you can see this is central nervous system again see this is a central nervous system the brain and the spinal cord and this is our organ the effector organ this side our organ is there and at, this is the uh, ganglion this is the ganglion the junction so here the ganglion is towards the organ ganglion is never at the center the first rule ganglion is never at the center either it is towards the organ or it is towards the central nervous system you got my point listen the first story when the ganglion is towards the organ in that scenario in that scenario the preganglionic length 
will be longer than post ganglion so when pre ganglion is longer and post ganglion is shorter because the ganglion is located towards the organ such system is known as parasympathetic so this is the definition of parasympathetic you got my point on the other way round when the ganglion is towards the central nervous system in this scenario the pre ganglion is shorter and post ganglion is longer so this system is known as sympathetic you got my point in both of them we are having two two neurons one is pre one is post so you got it khushi priyanshi uh, padmavati osama you got it please everyone give me a thumbs up it is a big concept i have given you you got my point so what are the two types of systems we are having sympathetic and parasympathetic so what you have learned regarding them we have learned in parasympathetic the ganglion is towards organ it is towards the organ that's why here pre ganglionic is longer than post ganglionic but in sympathetic we have learned that ganglion is towards system it is towards cns that's why here post ganglionic is longer than pre ganglionic please note it down please understand it it's very 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 important you got so that is autonomic nervous system which is motor nerves motor or efferent one and the same thing so these all are motor nerves these are also motor nerves these are also motor nerves right but they all are supplying the involuntary organs that is smooth muscles not the skeletal muscle if you say uh, skeletal muscle it, it will become somatic system so motor system is of two type the somatic the autonomic you got my point so today i am concerned with autonomic nervous system not the somatic uh, nervous system you got my point so this is the complete scenario right so what we have learned we have learned the two types of Uh, so, uh, ans autonomic nervous system the parasympathetic one and the sympathetic one we have already seen we have already seen in the parasympathetic one the ganglion is close to the organ right that's why pre ganglion is long post ganglion is short does anyone have any problem in that no in the sympathetic the ganglion is close to the spinal cord or close to the cns you can say right that's why pre ganglion is short and post ganglion is long if you can compare it if you can compare you got my point now my next point see can you see this diagram a beautiful diagram in front of you you can see this is brain and this is spinal cord how many cranial nerves we have how many spinal nerves we have i have already told you from the brain 12 cranial nerves arise and from the spinal cord 31 pairs of spinal cord spinal nerves are there so 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves now you will ask me ma'am if you are saying we are having two types of systems the sympathetic and the parasympathetic among the cranial and spinal total nerves which one are sympathetic and which one are parasympathetic you tell me the names you should ask me this question you got my point what is my next query my next query is among the cranial and spinal nerves which of them are sympathetic what is the distribution basically what is the location in human body so let me first talk about parasympathetic ek ek karke baat karenge parasympathetic ki baat karu parasympathetic none of the spinal nerve is parasympathetic yes none of this i'm sorry one only one is there so we are having four cranial nerves listen which are parasympathetic the nerve number 3 7 9 10 now number 3 you know what is 3 what is 7 7 is facial you know 9 and you know 10 vagus so 3 7 9 10 out of the 12 we are having 12 cranial nerves na 12 hoti hai na cranial nerves sabko pata hai na 12 ke 12 naam usme se naam number 3 7 9 10 ye char aapki parasympathetic hai aap bolo theek hai mam cranial mein se to this is the distribution what about spinal spinal we have divided into five portions na spinal nerves the spinal nerves there are 31 pairs so out of the 31 the first eight are cranial um uh, cervical i'm sorry the first eight are cervical the next 12 are thoracic or dorsal the next five are lumbar right uh the next five are sacral the last one is coccygeal right say yes or no say yes or no on this point you know that now and total is 31 so if you add them all it will become 31 right so out of these only these sacral have parasympathetic distribution that's it so from the cranial so what is parasympathetic let me finish parasympathetic parasympathetic is story kon batayega sachin vardhan khushi usma padmavati priyanshi koi batao parasympathetic mein how many cranial nerves we have which are parasympathetic and how many spinal nerves we have which are parasympathetic who will tell me the story among the cranial only four can you can you number which four out of the 12 we are having 12 cranial which one which one So it is now number three, now number seven, now number nine and ten. It's very important MCQ. You can't afford missing it. 
और स्पाइनल में से ओनली सैक्रल ओनली सैक्रल नो सर्वाइकल नो थोरसिक नो डॉसल नो लंबर नो कॉक्सीजन राइट ओनली सैक्रल वन सो एम आई राइट यस यस पदमावती उमा एवरी वन इज राइट वेरी गुड वेरी गुड सो कैन आई से पैरासिंपेथेटिक का डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज क्रेनियो सैक्रल अमंग द क्रेनियो दे आर फोर एंड सैक्रल सो इट इज नोन एज क्रेनियो सैक्रल इट इज नोन एज सी दर्ड क्रेनियो सैक्रल क्रेनियो सैक्रल वर्ड को याद कर लो पैरासिंपेथेटिक सिस्टम इज क्रेनियो सैक्रल इन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन तुम्हें ये लाइन मिलेगी बुक में सो यू विल अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग नाउ की क्रेनियो सैक्रल का मीनिंग क्या है क्रेनियो क्रेनियो में से चार आए द फोर क्रेनियो यू नो विच वन और सैक्रल इज स्पाइनल वन स्पाइनल में से सिर्फ सैक्रल आया सो पैरासिंपेथेटिक आर क्रेनियो सैक्रल ठीक है यू विल से ठीक है मैम वी गॉट इट नो सिंपेथेटिक का क्या सिंपेथेटिक में से क्रेनियल कौन कौन से लोगे आप और स्पाइनल कौन कौन से लोगे स्पाइनल कौन कौन से लोगे क्रेनियल वी आर हैविंग ट्वेल्व क्रेनियल स्पाइनल यू ऑलरेडी नो द एट सर्वाइकल द फाइव थोरेसिक आई एम सॉरी द ट्वेल्व थोरेसिक द फाइव लंबर द फाइव सैक्रल एंड वन कॉक्सीजन तो इनमें से कौन से हैं Which one are there? So my point is that none of the cranial nerve have sympathetic distribution. None, none. Cranial hota hi nahi hai. None, none. Among the spinal, we will take these two: the twelfth thoracic and the five lumbar. Right. So it is known as thoraco lumbar in distribution. Or do- thoracic is also known as dorsal, na dorso. So either say the sympathetic nerves are thoraco, thoraco lumbar in distribution, or you say dorso lumbar, dorso. Because thoraco and dorsal is one and the same thing, so dorsal lumbar. I guess I am able to make you understand. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So I am again summarizing. So you can see it is dorsal lumbar. I am I am summarizing the location of the two types of systems. So let me draw it beautifully in front of you. Let me tell you the summary of parasympathetic. Let me tell you the summary of sympathetic. Every one on the screen. Every one. I am giving you a beautiful comparison. who will tell me what are these two both of them are the type of autonomic nervous system both of them are motor nerves these are not sensory nerves the motor nerves which supply involuntary organs so this also supply involuntary this also supply involuntary because both of them are autonomic if they supply the voluntary muscle they will become somatic i'm not teaching you somatic i'm teaching you autonomic right so the first thing is this now here in parasympathetic the ganglion is close to organ Right? Am I right? Yes, I am right. And in sympathetic, the ganglion is close to spinal cord or central nervous system. If ganglion is close to the organ, here pre-ganglionic nerve fiber is longer than post. Is baat pe sab log thumbs up de do. The one who are attending the lecture from the beginning, they know what I am talking about. Or ganglion is close to the CNS. Here post-ganglion is longer uh, than pre-ganglion. Right? Pre-ganglion is shorter. So the first thing you have to understand this. ये तो पहली चीज़ हुई, right? Now after that we have talked about their distribution. We have to talk about their distribution. So if you talk about the distribution, okay? Here I will take say which one cranial out of the twelve cranial and which spinal out of the thirty one spinal which one you will pick from here? And here out of the cranial the twelve cranial which you will pick here and out of the spinal the thirty one spinal which you will pick here? Can someone help me for this? Please help me. So in parasympathetic from the cranial, I will take four, three, seven, nine, and ten. Now number three, now number seven, now number nine, now number ten. And from the spinal, I will pick only sacral, sacral distribution. So this com- combination, this combination, the cranial, the four cranial, and the from the spinal only sacral. It is known as it is known as craniosacral, craniosacral in distribution, craniosacral in distribution. Come on, sympathetic one. Come on, sympathetic one. In the sympathetic one, let's stop here. None of the sympathetic nerve is cranial. We are having only spinal. In the spinal, we have thoracic and lumbar, also known as dorsal lumbar. So can I say it is thoraco lumbar or dorsal lumbar in distribution? Yes. So compare the distribution of the both. Please compare. Please compare. So you have seen the location of the ganglion in both of them. You have seen the length of the fiber, the pre and the post ganglionic fiber in both of them. You have seen their distribution. So can I say parasympathetic are craniosacral in distribution and sympathetic are thoraco lumbar or dorsal lumbar in distribution? This all you will find in your textbooks. Whatever standard textbook you are following, I am teaching you. Complete it is written everywhere. So this is the most simplified version I can tell you. Right. So ये तो distribution हुआ. अब next point आएगा. They are neurotransmitters and their action. दो और चीजें इसमें पढ़नी हैं हमें. We will go ahead. So we have understood it. Can you see here? Beautiful diagram. Okay. Give me a minute to uh, uh, erase everything and come again. 
so that you will have a better. Now, in this beautiful diagram, what you are seeing, you can see this is brain and this is spinal cord, right? This is spinal cord. On this side, parasympathetic nerves are coming out. On this side, the sympathetic one are coming out. So the green color are the parasympathetic one, the red one are the sympathetic one. See, parasympathetic kaha kaha se hai. Can you see from where they are coming? I can see few of them are coming from the brain. 3, 7, 9, 10. Few of them are coming from the brain and few of them are coming from the sacral portion. If you can notice it, if you can notice it. So they are coming either from the brain or from the sacral portion, the last portion, the sacral portion. So they are craniosacral in distribution. See on the other way round. Sympathetic kaha kaha se hai. So if you see, none of them is coming from the brain. None of them is coming from the brain. They all are coming either from thoracic or lumbar. They all are coming either from thoracic or lumbar. You got it? Can I proceed ahead? Shall we go ahead? So that is the point. That is the point. Uh, so we have understood till now. Uh, what we have understood, can you tell me? The somatic system and the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system right they all are motor nerves because see the arrow they all are carrying the signal from the central nervous system towards the organ right so what is the difference between somatic and autonomic priyanshi what is the difference between somatic and autonomic usama what is the difference somatic supplies skeletal muscle that is voluntary in nature and autonomic supplies smooth muscle that is involuntary in nature so based on the organ we are we are differentiating the motor nerves into two types so motor all the motor nerve have same function they carry signal from central nervous system towards the organ but what is organ? Kya hai? organ voluntary or involuntary? Hai? organ if bicep, tricep, skeletal muscle hai, ho gaya somatic system ki motor nerve or if the organ is heart, hai, intestine, hai, peristalsis, hai, lung hai, which is not under my control if involuntary smooth muscles, then the system is autonomic. Now, why do I have two autonomic? In the somatic system, we are having only one now. So, no, no need to name it. Now, starting from the CNS, ending in the organ. That's it. Very simple. They will study any organ. But in the autonomic nervous system, we are having two, two neurons. The first neuron and the second neuron. The second neuron. So, we have a junction. The junction is known as ganglion. This junction is known as ganglion. So ganglion is never central in position. Center mein nahi hota hai. Either it is towards the organ. You can see in the first scenario it is towards the organ. Organ ke zada pass hai. So here pre is longer than post. Pre ganglion is longer than post ganglion. In, so this one is parasympathetic. Or sympathetic mein the ganglion is close to the CNS. So here pre is shorter and post is longer. Ye humne pura dekh liya. And we have seen their distribution also. Very good. Very good. Yes. Yes Priyanshi. So yes. So this is the complete scenario. We have seen that. You can see the same scenario here also. This is central nervous system. This is your organ. Organ, the involuntary organ. You can see the smooth muscle. See the location of the ganglion. The ganglion is towards the organ. So pre is longer than post. It is parasympathetic. The ganglion is close to the CNS. So pre is shorter and post is longer. So same thing showed by various books, different panels. So we have seen their distribution also. So this is the standard Diagram given in KDT, KD Triparty book, which is a standard textbook for MBBS students. I must, uh, I, I believe that. There are many other good books also you can follow apart from this. So from that book, I have picked this diagram. So same information is given here also. You can see this is central nervous system and this is your organ, right? Now see what is the organ? Organ is skeletal muscle or organ is some involuntary muscle? Involuntary muscle, right? If the organ is skeletal muscle, this one is the somatic system. Can you see this one is the somatic system you can understand it it is the somatic system i guess and if the organ is involuntary these all are autonomic nervous system now see the location of the ganglion the ganglion kaha pair towards the organ or towards the cns so based on that we can differentiate we have seen so finally this is the summary this is the overview till now nervous system we divide into two categories the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system contains nerves the sensory nerves the motor nerves I am interested in motor nerves. Motor nerves are of two types. Depending which organ they are supplying. They are supplying. Either they are supplying the voluntary or involuntary. So they are autonomic or somatic. Autonomic further of two types. The sympathetic and parasympathetic. So that is the complete summary. Now coming on the neurotransmitter. Coming on the next point. Neurotransmitter. See. See I have drawn these diagrams for you. These are all diagrams which I am showing you. These are not given in any books. I have myself drawn these diagrams to explain you the concepts. Right, so you also have to draw these diagrams in your exams, in your university exams, the simplified version. Now tell me the name of the neurotransmitter in each system. You can see the three diagrams. You all know now this is somatic. 
because only one neuron is there and these two are autonomic because two two neurons are there in somatic as we know we have one neuron so we require only one neurotransmitter the in the end at the at the level of the organ so that is acetylcholine so in somatic system only one neurotransmitter is required because we have one neuron one neuron hai to ek hi neurotransmitter lagega na signal yahan se chala the signal is starting from the cns from the brain signal gaya 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 and at the level of the organ the signal is coming in the form of the acetylcholine that's it the signal will be given to the organ right so this is how we require only one that is acetylcholine but in autonomic nervous system we are having two two neurons so we have a ganglion at the junction of the two neuron the pre ganglion neuron post ganglion pre ganglion post ganglion in parasympathetic also in sympathetic also so we will be requiring two two neurotransmitters am i right we will be requiring two two neurotransmitter the one neurotransmitter at the pre ganglion level and the one neurotransmitter at the post ganglion level are you agree with me i guess you are so at the pre ganglion it is always acetylcholine whether it is parasympathetic whether it is sympathetic at the level of the ganglion you can see in both of them it is acetylcholine pre ganglion fiber hamesha acetylcholine hi secrete karta hai wo pre ganglion chahe parasympathetic ka ho wo pre ganglion chahe sympathetic ka ho but it is the post ganglion organ level pe yahan pe organ ke level pe jo neurotransmitter secrete hota hai that is different in parasympathetic and sympathetic so let's talk about that if you see the neurotransmitter if you see the neurotransmitter in parasympathetic system the post ganglionic one it is also acetylcholine so both are acetylcholine right but if you see the post ganglionic neurotransmitter in sympathetic one it is not adrenaline it is not adrenaline so based on this neurotransmitter which is at the organ level we differentiate the two systems the sympathetic and parasympathetic listen now so you see only this neurotransmitter don't see the ganglion one the ganglion one is also always acetylcholine so no need to see that see the end end the post ganglionic the organ neurotransmitter the organ neurotransmitter the post ganglionic neurotransmitter if it is acetylcholine it is parasympathetic system that's why parasympathetic system is known as cholinergic system you know parasympathetic ka dusra naam cholinergic kahan se aaya tumhe puchna chahiye mam parasympathetic ko cholinergic kyun kehte hain kyunki yahan pe last wala neurotransmitter acetylcholine hai the last neurotransmitter at the level of the organ is acetylcholine that's why it is known as cholinergic और सिंपैथेटिक सिस्टम को एड्रिनर्जिक सिस्टम क्यों कहते हैं द अदर नेम ऑफ द सिंपैथेटिक सिस्टम इज एड्रिनर्जिक सिस्टम बिकॉज़ द लास्ट न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर एट द लेवल ऑफ द ऑर्गन इज नॉट एड्रिनलिन गिव मी अ थम्स अप गिव मी अ थम्स अप एब्सोल्युटली राइट प्रियांशी वेरी गुड सो यू गॉट द अदर नेम्स व्हाई प्रियांशी यू गॉट इट व्हाई पैरासिंपैथेटिक इज नोन एज कोलिनर्जिक सिस्टम एंड व्हाई सिंपैथेटिक इज नोन एज एड्रिनर्जिक सिस्टम यू गॉट दिस पॉइंट बिकॉज़ बेस्ड ऑन द पोस्ट गैंगलियोनिक न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर व्हिच इज डिफरेंट इन बोथ सो दिस इज द थिंग आई टोल्ड यू अगेन जस्ट रिवाइज सोमैटिक को आज पढ़ना नहीं है लेकिन फिर भी सोमैटिक का न्यूरोट्रांसमीटर देख लो राइट सो सोमैटिक ओनली वन न्यूरोट्रांसमीटर एसेटाइलकोलिन बोल के खत्म करो बिकॉज़ इन सोमैटिक वी हैव वन न्यूरॉन वन न्यूरोट्रांसमीटर दैट्स इट फिनिश इट जस्ट फिनिश इट नो कम ऑन ऑटोनॉमिक इन द ऑटोनॉमिक वी आर हैविंग टू टू न्यूरॉन्स टू इन पैरासिंपैथेटिक टू इन सिंपैथेटिक सो वी विल बी रिक्वायरिंग टू टू न्यूरोट्रांसमीटर द प्री गैंगलियोनिक द पोस्ट गैंगलियोनिक प्री गैंगलियोनिक इज ऑलवेज एसेटाइलकोलिन ऑलवेज विदाउट एनी डिफॉल्ट इट्स ऑलवेज acetylcholine but the post ganglionic one is different which makes the difference right so post ganglionic one is again acetylcholine in case of parasympathetic and it is not adrenaline in case of sympathetic that's why parasympathetic known as cholinergic sympathetic known as adrenergic so this is what i have already taught you this is what i have already taught you you can summarize it in the form of the flow chart now listen if you are a second prop mbbs student targeting for your university exam now in your exam copy you don't have to write paragraphs right now it may be happening that you may have noticed that you and your friend in the first prop you are studying together you both have same knowledge or maybe you are having more knowledge than your friend still in all the sessionals and pre pus and use your friend is getting more mark your colleague is getting so you you have the query that why i am having more knowledge i am writing more than the other person but still dusre ko zyada number kyun milte it is the way of presentation in university exam copy university exam main knowledge or presentation both are important बट इन कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स नीट पी जी एफ एम जी आई एन आई सी टी नेक्स्ट जो भी तुम्हारी होगी उसमें ओनली नॉलेज मैटर्स बिकॉज वहां पर एग्जाम डिस्क्रिप्टिव नहीं है ऑब्जेक्टिव है ऑब्जेक्टिव में सिर्फ आपका नॉलेज मैटर करता है वहां पर द वे ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन यूर हैंड राइटिंग तुमने कितना क्लियर प्रेजेंट किया वो मैटर नहीं करता है क्योंकि वो तो ऑब्जेक्टिव एग्जाम है लेकिन यूनिवर्सिटी में ये सब इक्वली मैटर करते हैं इवन ज्यादा मैटर करते हैं नॉलेज से यू मे हैव सीन सम पर्सन दे डोंट स्टडी मोर लेकिन फिर भी एग्जाम में मार्क्स ठीक ठाक एवरेज आ जाते हैं कैसे the way they present right so presentation should be good my point is that draw the flow charts always draw the flow charts don't write paragraphs right so this is how you have to uh, that these are the tricks how to get good marks distinctions in second prop or any university exam 
anyways i'm talking about the neurotransmitter we are having two systems the somatic the autonomic in the somatic it's always 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 acetylcholine only one is required but in autonomic we are having two type of autonomic the sympathetic the parasympathetic each one preganglion postganglion preganglion postganglion so at the level of preganglion it's always acetylcholine it's always acetylcholine but at the level of postganglion it differs it differs at the level of postganglion if it is parasympathetic it's acetylcholine that's why parasympathetic is known as cholinergic system and it's sympathetic mostly it is not adrenaline sometimes it may be adrenaline and dopamine also so this system is known as adrenergic system adrenergic system right so that is the thing that is the thing so parasympathetic cholinergic sympathetic adrenergic why because of the neurotransmitter which is secreted at the organ which is different in both of them so we have learned one more difference between them so draw a table between parasympathetic and sympathetic write down their distribution write down their neurotransmitter uh, write down their ganglion position write down everything the difference the last thing is their action what are their action listen in human body from head to toe what organs we are having let's talk about few organs i will not talk about all organs but let's talk we all have eye of course we all have eye upar se niche aate hain in the eye we are having the pupil inside the eye see i have drawn a small eye here this is eye can you see after that we have salivary gland here right i have drawn a small salivary gland just to explain you have taken few organs then in the chest we are having the heart so i have drawn the heart we are having two lungs so i have drawn lungs right the two lungs you can see after that the complete git the esophagus the stomach the small intestine the large intestine the liver the pancreas the complete git you can say right and this is last one uh, okay urinary bladder the urinary system the urinary bladder and um uh, kya kehte hain ureter the urinary bladder and in the last genitals are there i have not drawn that so this is the complete organs now you will say the receptors of sympathetic and parasympathetic are present on which organ my answer to you is that every organ have both receptors every organ have sympathetic receptors also every organ have parasympathetic receptors also parasympathetic have m and n receptor muscarinic and nicotinic these are the name of the receptors for parasympathetic and sympathetic system have alpha and beta receptors so these are the name of the receptors for sympathetic so muscarinic nicotinic that is mn are parasympathetic receptors and alpha and beta they are sympathetic usme bhi we have alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 sab padhenge detail mein aaram se aur muscarinic mein we have m1 m2 m3 right like we have many but muscarinic nicotinic m or n are the parasympathetic one and alpha and beta are the sympathetic one so all organs have both let me draw a organ for you to explain you what i mean to say so all organs from head to toe in human body have both both receptors so in all organ the uh, the parasympathetic receptors either m or n they are present and in all organs either alpha or beta either of them also present so you will say ma'am at a particular point which is activated both cannot be activated simultaneously so at a particular point only one of them is activated this is parasympathetic and this is sympathetic and this is your organ please understand ha bahut easy hai sab kuch agar samjho to everything is like fun so this is your your organ so any one of them is activated so which one is activated so currently i am teaching you and you are studying from me you are watching my lecture at this moment which is activated in all of us which is activated can anyone tell me which is activated in all of us usama priyanshi which is activated in you aditya which is activated in me yes so which one is activated so parasympathetic so whenever we are relaxed abhi hum log relax hai na cool mood mein pad rahe hain koi tension mein to nahi hai right so we all are relaxed right now so whenever we are relaxed the parasympathetic is activated in all of us but whenever in case of some emergency imagine a tiger comes in front of me what i will i will save my life i will start running right imagine i am having exam tomorrow imagine in the next one hour my results are going to declare so it is emergency situation right it can be any emergency so whenever any emergency situation exists at that point sympathetic will come in role you got my point so one of them is activated in relaxed state the parasympathetic one is activated in emergency the sympathetic one is activated the organ is same the organ is same so you will say ma'am if the organ is same they have different functions the opposite function in each organ just suppose let's 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 talk about the relaxed state let's talk about the parasympathetic system whenever we are relaxed so in the pupil of the eye in the eye in the pupil of the eye my pupil is narrowed i don't want much vision right i'm relaxed now i'm just sitting i want to see this 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 much portion only and i'm relaxed so pupil is meiotic in parasympathetic system whenever we are relaxed common sense my pupil is meiotic but whenever a lion in front of me i want the vision to be wide i want to run right so at that time the pupil will be midriatic so 
parasympathetic cause meiosis in the pupil and sympathetic cause midriasis in the pupil right so it constricts pupil it dilates pupil so they have opposite action on the pupil so let me draw a eye here just to explain you i have draw few organs this is the eye this is the pupil of the eye this is the pupil of the eye so whenever we are relaxed we are relaxed at that time the parasympathetic system is activated so m and n receptors causes constriction of the pupil because much vision is not required which is known as meiosis which is known as meiosis but whenever some emergency is there at that time sympathetic will come in role at that time alpha and beta will get activated and they will dilate the pupil which is known as midriosis so meiosis and midriosis are opposite of each other and the each in each organ they have opposite action like i they have opposite action in all the organ you got my point you got my point come on the next organ ek ek karke sare organs sab samajh lete hain the next organ i have drawn here is the salivary gland right currently i am i am relaxed now so i feel i feel hungry i want to eat after the lecture i have my breakfast is ready outside after the session i will have my breakfast i will have my lunch dinner so we all have that so we want saliva in the mouth but there is a law and there is no time to eat i want to run so whenever there is some emergency now we don't want to eat in the emergency at that time the saliva decreases you got my point so if this is salivary gland this is the salivary gland so in case we are relaxed if we are relaxed at that time the parasympathetic is activated that cause increased salivation because we want to eat but in case of emergency at that time sympathetic is activated and that cause decreased salivation you got my point so again they have opposite function in the eye also they have opposite action in the salivary gland also they have opposite action give me a thumbs up you are getting it yes you are getting the points right coming on the next organ we are done with eye we are done with salivary gland next is heart currently in relaxed state my heartbeat is normal normal heartbeat is 70 to 100 if you measure your pulse your heartbeat it will be somewhere between 70 to 100 but whenever the results are going to announce in the next 5 minutes you have the 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 right so heart is bouncing out so at that time the heartbeat is like anything right it can be 120 130 sometimes 140 tachycardia hoga so in emergency the heartbeat increases so normally heartbeat is reduced but in emergency it it increases so parasympathetic reduced heartbeat and sympathetic increase heart rate common sense samajh raha hai coming on the lungs the next organ is the lungs currently i am relaxed so i don't want more oxygen right relaxed state hai to aaram se thoda bahut oxygen mein bhi kaam chal raha hai so my the bronchia of the lung is constricted but whenever there is a lion in front of me i want to run 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 my muscles are contracting i want more oxygen so my bronchi will dilate so sympathetic causes dilatation of the bronchi Uh, why i am telling you the same story again and again the relaxed and the emergency right you have to imagine if you imagine if you understand the concept now you don't have to learn students learn ki parasympathetic heart pe kya karta hai lung pe kya karta hai sympathetic learn kyu karna hai common sense chalao na relaxed state mein kya hoga emergency mein kya hoga just 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 imagine the situation it is there right so this is how you have to learn coming on the next organ the git again whenever we are relaxed we want to eat we want to eat at the time parasympathetic is there but in case of emergency we don't want to eat so no parasympathetic no secretions so whenever we eat the gastric secretion is there pancreatic secretion is there intestinal secretion is there and parasympathetic is there but in case of emergency in sympathetic system no parasympathetic no gastric secretion no pa pa pancreatic secretion no intestinal secretion no bile no gall bladder nothing so all things will reverse Ah, huh? so till now you got it. Till now you got it. The next is urinary bladder, which is difficult to understand. Urinary bladder is difficult to understand. So I would like to draw the urinary bladder for you people here. This is urinary bladder, and this is urethra. This is urethra, right? This is urethra, and there is a sphincter here at the urethra. It is known as urethral sphincter. Sphincter, and there is a muscle in the urinary bladder. This muscle is known as detrusor. Students don't understand this concept. एक बार समझ लोगे ना ज़िंदगी भर काम आएगा. चारों chapter, cholinergic, anticholinergic, adrenergic, anti-adrenergic, all the four chapters will become fun for you if you understand these concepts. Now this is the basic chapter. ये कोई नहीं पढ़ाता basic. सीधे chapter शुरू करेंगे chapter one, cholinergic classification. अरे, what is autonomic nervous system? ये तो बताओ. उसके बाद तो chapters पढ़ेंगे. Okay, anyways, detrusor. Detrusor is the muscle. Listen, we all have urination, the act of micturition, right? so whenever urine get collected here this is urine when get collected here at that time we use washroom we use toilet the humans use toilet they relax the sphincter and the urine come out so whenever the sphincter is relaxed the urine come out and uh, after micturition again the sphincter is constricted and again we allow some hours 2 3 4 hours to collect the urine 
so whenever the urine is 300 ml to 300 ml at that time we use the washroom there is a urge of micturition that urge whenever that is the urge is felt the you must use the washroom and micturate so my point is that my what is my point uh, what happens at the time of micturition micturition and what happens uh, when the person is non micturating the when the person is non micturating sitting normally non micturating what is happening to detrusor and sphincter at both the scenario detrusor and sphincter first let's talk about the uh, non micturition so non micturition jab koi micturition nahi kar raha hai jab normally ghoom rahe hain fir rahe hain kha rahe hain pee rahe hain lecture attend kar rahe hain we are not micturating so at that time the detrusor is relaxed detrusor is relaxed and sphincter is constricted right sphincter is constricted so urine do not come out and detrusor is relaxed to allow the accumulation of the urine right but at the time of micturition we do the opposite we constrict the detrusor detrusor ko pura constrict kar denge right and sphincter ko relax kar denge so detrusor is constricted and sphincter is relaxed you got my point detrusor and sphincter box oppositely you got it so whenever you got it micturition ke time kya hoga what happens during micturition the detrusor will constrict right the bladder will constrict and the sphincter will be relaxed so that urine comes out or whenever the person is non micturating the detrusor will dilate so that urine accumulate 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 in the bladder and the sphincter is constricted so there is no leakage you got my point if you got it give me a thumbs up so okay you got it adikya you got it what about others adikya ke alawa kisi ko samajh mein aaya yes yes priyanshi very good listen priyanshi adikya everyone listen now listen everyone here now you tell me if you got this point now you have to give me the answer what happens during parasympathetic and what happens during sympathetic parasympathetic means relaxed state in relaxed state what will happen you answer what will happen to detrusor what will happen to sphincter and in sympathetic state that is in emergency state in emergency state what will happen to detrusor what will happen to sphincter ab kon batayega common sense apply the common sense you got the basic whenever we are relaxed now we have the urge of micturition time to time every 2 3 4 hours we go use the washroom we micturate whenever we are relaxed but have you imagined the day before exam you are studying for the whole day and you will realize that the night oh my god i have not used the washroom since morning i have not micturated once even so in emergency there is no time we don't even have urge we don't even have thought so in emergency or imagine there is a lion in front of me the person cannot say okay give me a minute lion i am going to micturate no it is not so in emergency we don't micturate right so like apply the knowledge now so whenever the person is relaxed the detrusor can constrict and the sphincter can relax to micturate but whenever in emergency the detrusor are always relaxed and the sphincter is constrict because of absence of micturition everyone give me a thumbs up if you got it everyone so this is the scenario about the that uh, about the urinary bladder i'm giving you next one minute if you have any doubt in the urinary bladder please ask me if you don't ask me i will skip the slide this slide will not come again you got it padmavati khushi priyanshi aditya you got it so what is happening in parasympathetic what is happening in sympathetic what happens to detrusor what happens to sphincter so whenever my point is that whenever you describe urinary bladder now students just describe urinary bladder constrict or relax are urinary bladder have two components bhai the urinary component uh, urinary bladder have detrusor urinary uh, bladder have sphincter describe the two components separately how you can merge the two components and say it together no urinary bladder whenever you will describe now in the four chapters you will describe cholinergic anticholinergic adrenergic and adrenergic in all the four chapters describe the two components of the urinary bladder separately right each drug what is the action this is the point this is the point if you know the basics now you know autonomic nervous system i always tell my students the four chapters cholinergic anticholinergic adrenergic and anti anti adrenergic it's like mathematics in max what we do we we learn the formulas we learn the equations right we learn how to do the addition how to do the subtraction we don't learn answers we don't learn calculations and then we just apply it just apply the formula equations and just we come on the answers it is like same the in the overview chapter once you have the broad idea na so in each chapter you have to apply that idea just apply that idea it is as simple as that believe me believe me no one in this world will teach you autonomic nervous system as simplified as me right you don't have to learn even a single thing in my lecture you have to understand my lecture if you have understood it properly now no need of rectification in any of the four chapter apart from classification you have to learn the classification that's it wo to ratna hi padega uske liye bhi mnemonic hai mere paas right apart from it nothing the adverse effect the uses kuch bhi learn karne ki zarurat nahi hai sab samajh ke karungi main sab samajh ke right so okay hum karenge ek ek chapter sab kuch karenge the only thing is time is limited right anyways chalo we have done the urinary bladder the last is the genitals in the genitals the only organ in which both the both the systems have same action not opposite 
In all other organs, we have seen the action is opposite, opposite, opposite. Right. But in the genitals, in the genitals, I am considering the panus of the male. It is known as male genital organ. So during sexual intercourse in male genital organ, main genital organ that is panis right it is understood it is panis there are two actions during sexual intercourse there is erection and there is ejaculation erection followed by ejaculation ejaculation right so erection followed they are, they are not opposite actions you, you understand they are complementary actions so erection is followed by ejaculation they are not opposite as an ek one is increased one is there no they are they are, they are complementary erection is caused by parasympathetic system and ejaculation is caused by sympathetic system. So only in genital organs, the sympathetic and parasympathetic action is complementary. It is not opposite. Apart from which, all other organs have opposite action. This is my summary. Give me a thumbs up. So let me draw a list of organs to simplify the things in front of you. Here I will draw the list of organs. You have to say what happens in parasympathetic, what happens in sympathetic. Just to summarize. Just to summarize. Ye samaj liya to pure chaun chapter simplify ho gaya. Samaj lena ye baat. Right. So you tell me what will happen in the eye, the pupil of the eye. You tell me what will happen in the salivary gland. You tell me what happens in heart. You tell me what happens in lungs. You tell me what happens in GIT. You tell me what happens in urinary bladder. Me do do cheez ne bol rahi hu mein. Um, detrusor sphincter, detrusor sphincter, and you tell me what happens in genital, the male genital. Okay, shuru karenge. Who will answer? Chalo, I ka answer karo. Parasympathetic me kya, sympathetic me kya. In the parasympathetic, I is showing meiosis, and here it's showing midriasis. I will not explain again. I have already explained why. Give me a thumbs up. On every point, I need appreciation and thumbs up. Okay, right, right. Salivary gland me, what will happen? Here the secretion increase, here the secretion decrease. Okay, bolo, fata fata bolte jao, bhai. Heart may, here heart rate decrease, here heart rate increase. Tachycardia, bradycardia, tachycardia. Theek hai, lungs mein aja hai. Here, bronchoconstriction. Constriction, we don't want much oxygen in relaxed state. But in emergency, there is bronchodilatation. Theek hai, yes, bolo, pata pat bolo, time nahi hai. GIT may, GIT may parastolysis be increased, secretions be increased. All secretions, the bile, the pancreatic, the intestinal, everything. And here parastolysis be decreased and secretions be decreased. Right? Chalo. The most important is the urinary bladder. Kaun pataega? In parasympathetic detrusor kya karega? I guess detrusor will constrict. And the sphincter will relax. So that the person can micturate. The person can pass the urine. But in emergency the detrusor will relax. And the sphincter will constrict. So that person do not pass the urine. Because it is emergency there is no time to pass the urine. I have learned like this. You can learn any way. Jaise tumhe achcha lage. Only genitals have complementary action. Baaki sab opposite hai. Genitals mein here erection and here ejaculation. Ejaculation. Tumhe dikh raha hai kya pura? I cannot simplify more than this. I have skipped some of the organ that we will study in detail when we study the chapter. So that's all about sympathetic and parasympathetic. Do you know the difference between somatic and autonomic nervous system? Yes. Do you know the difference between sympathetic and parasympathetic now? Yes. So you know everything now, I guess. I guess you have understood everything. Now, please listen, everyone. We have to study the four chapters, the cholinergic, anticholinergic, adrenergic, anti-adrenergic. Cholinergic also known as, okay, listen fast, listen. So, uh, how I explain you? I do explain karu, I don't know. Everyone understand Hindi? Someone here who don't understand Hindi? This is an organ. Okay, this is an organ. On the organ, we have muscarinic or nicotinic receptor and we have alpha or beta receptor. The muscarinic nicotinic receptor are parasympathetic receptors, right? And alpha and beta are sympathetic receptors. Okay, so no, so no. The first chapter and the second chapter, cholinergic and anticholinergic are regarding this system. So we are having two types of drugs. The cholinergic drugs, so no, so no. Cholinergic drugs that will stimulate this receptor, that are the agonists for this receptor. And anticholinergic drugs that are the antagonists, that are the blocker of this receptor. So cholinergic and anticholinergic system is all about this, this, this system, the parasympathetic. If you know what are the, just now I have told you the actions of the system, na? I pe kya hoga, salivary gland pe kya hoga, GIT pe. So all the actions will be exaggerated if you use this drug. And all the actions will be inhibited if you use this drug. So many short mein chapter padha di. Yes or no, detail mein padhenge. You got my point? These are the two chapters. The next two chapters, the adrenergic, adrenergic. Right, adrenergic and anti-adrenergic. These two chapters, they act on alpha-beta receptors. 
So adrenergic drugs are the drugs which stimulate alpha and beta receptor. They are the agonist of alpha and beta receptor. And anti-adrenergic are the drugs which inhibit alpha blocker, beta blocker. It is of two types, now. Anti-adrenergic me two chapter aate hai. Alpha blocker, beta blocker. So we separate them. The one which block alpha, the one which block beta. So ye sab aapko anti-adrenergic me padna hai. Right. So this is the overview. This is the overview. You got my point. You got my point. So a last cheese. Chalo, okay. Next time, I will tell you. It is a very important thing. Okay. So these are the four chapters like this. One class is okay. I cannot, you know. Okay, I will tell you. It is a very good point. So what are the four chapters you tell me? So I am teaching you cholinergic and teaching you anti cholinergic. I am teaching you adrenergic. I will teach you anti adrenergic. The four chapters. Let me summarize what I mean to say an important point. So cholinergic, let me talk about the eye. Let me talk about the eye. Eye में meiosis, midriasis की बात करो. So cholinergic क्या करता है? Cholinergic is stimulating the parasympathetic. Parasympathetic eye में क्या करता है? Priyanshi, what does parasympathetic system do in the eye, in the in the pupil? Meiosis or midriasis? So in parasympathetic we are relaxed. So we have meiosis. So cholinergic meiosis ही करेगा. Because it is the agonist. It is the agonist. So it will do meiosis. It will do meiosis. Like parasympathetic it will do meiosis. Right? Anti cholinergic क्या करेगा? Uska opposite. Anticholinergic will block the cholinergic. Right? So it will do medriasis. It will do medriasis. Right? Like, you got my point. Adrenergic kya karega? Adrenergic wahi karega to sympathetic karta hai. Sympathetic kya karta hai ayame? Sympathetic ayame karta hai medriasis. Medriasis. Or anti-adrenergic uska opposite karega that is meiosis. Medriasis ka. So this is opposite of this. This is opposite of this. You got my point. What I mean to say. Samaj mein aya kya mene kya kaha? You got my point. Right? So can you see? Can you see? ये दोनों तो आपस में ही opposite थे ना? Cholinergic और adrenergic आपस में ही opposite हैं। One is sympathetic, one is parasympathetic. On all the organs they are opposite, except the male genital organ. ठीक है? You can see here is meiosis, here is midriasis. So meiosis का opposite midriasis इधर है और midriasis का opposite meiosis यहाँ पे। Right? तो ये दोनों आपस में opposite हो जाएँगे। So if you understand the basics ना, things are like fun, like mathematics. I'm just applying the my knowledge. That's it. I don't have to learn. Students learn that cholinergic drugs are there, new stigma, pyzo stigma, this is in meiosis, this is in meiosis, this is in meiosis, this is in meiosis, just apply the mathematics. You should know the classification properly, that which drug is in which category. Then you can apply that which drug is in meiosis, which drug is in meiosis, what is in meiosis, you know the basics. So you know that in the relaxed state, there is in meiosis, in the emergency, there is in meiosis. So just apply it. Just apply it. One drug, these are agonists, these are agonists, Blockers. These are agonists. These are blockers. One of one of cholinergic system. One of anticholinergic system. I guess you can understand what I mean to say. So these four chapters I will take in detail in the next sessions also. After few days I will start the ANS because there are many 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 important points. I get requests for multiple huge amount of students from throughout the India throughout the country and they just text me the topics. They want this this. So depending on the demand, how much the topic is in demand, I decide the schedule for the next week. I guess I have offered you also to text me what important topic you want from my side. So if you have not texted yet, kindly text me what topic you want from my side to be studied in the free sessions here. Right. So uh, before ending the session, I want to ask you a few questions. So can you tell me the answer? Can you tell me the answer? Answer with oh, I'm sorry. What is the answer here? Pre-ganglionic parasympathetic fibers are not carried by which cranial nerve? Not carried. I am asking about parasympathetic. Parasympathetic ka kya distribution tha? This is nerve number 3, this is 5, this is 7, this is 10. It is written in Roman numbers I guess. Who will tell me the answer? Aditya Kushi Osama. Yes, Osama, you are absolutely right. So answer is B because I told you 4 nerves. 3, 7, 9, 10. Rest all there in the options. Rest all. Yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Can you tell me the origin of sympathetic fibers? Sympathetic fibers are what? They are cranio, they are sacral, they are dorsal lumbar or they, they are none. What is the answer, Priyanshi? What is the answer here? Yes, Kushi. What is the answer? Yes, Osama. Again, the answer is dorsal lumbar or thoraco lumbar. So this is how you will get many, many MCQs based on all this general knowledge. So thank you very much for being with me. Still, if you have any doubt, don't hesitate to connect on my contact number. It's 9833032948. Kindly text me, don't call me. Some students in excitation, they just call me. I will not receive the call. So kindly text me your query. So I will definitely get back to you. If, if required, I will call you. So if you have any query, just text me your query, study related query. If you have any doubt, 
so either you can connect on the telegram or you can collect on the connect on the whatsapp don't forget to tell your college name university and exam dates i can help you with further schedule or whatever things you require for that thank you very much for being with me thank you very much for your precious time i really appreciate the time you people are giving to me daily and tomorrow we are studying microbiology daily at the 9 am in the morning we will study live daily one important topic tomorrow i am going to teach you complete virology general don't forget don't forget to join me live tomorrow virology right so thank you very much study hard all the best bye bye and again i uh, wish you all the best for your exam so i am ending the session